Proverbs chapter 24. <laughs> Be not envious against evil men, neither, neither desire to be with them. So you can control your desire. Your desire, the Bible says, can be controlled. The problem is, will you want to be? Jeremiah chapter 24, verse 2 and 3. But their heart, that's the evil men, studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. God doesn't want you around them. And notice how the word, the word mischief goes along with the word evil. You know, we've taken that little word of mischief and we've lightened it down. Naughty is another word. We've lightened that down and watered it down for what the Bible says. Those words mischief, evil, and naughty are all the same according to Scripture. And you're not to have anything to do with them. Their heart study It's not head. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. The heart is wicked above all things. For out of the heart proceedeth the adulteries, the fornication, murder. You're not going to solve problems by dealing with it as a disease or as a head condition or a shrink. We talked about alcoholism. It's not a disease. Mischief and naughtiness is not a disease. It's sin. And the only way you can deal with sin is not a doctor, it's Calvary. No doctor can take care of your sin. But if we give it a nice little cuddly little word as disease, Listen, that woman spent all she had to all the doctors. And nothing could have been done till she came to Jesus. Through wisdom is in house building. It takes wisdom to build a house. And by understanding, it is established. Mark uh, Matthew 7 24 Luke 6 48 and Proverbs 9 1 now it's not just building a physical house it's your home by the wisdom and understanding that God has given you it's not just bricks and, and yeah it applies to bricks and wood and all that it's also the, the house that you got with the family like the church is not a building, it's people. And the question is, is your house established by the understanding of God? And by knowledge shall the chambers be full, filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And the riches, Luke 14, 31. Now, what 22 chapters, we, I mean, 23 chapters we completed so far, do you think those riches are gold, silver, and all that gained by er earthly and worldly means? No. Verses 3 and 4 has got to be given by God. Because you can have all the riches in your house. You can have your house full of junk. And without the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge that we see in these two verses. Your home is not going to be established by God. It was done by worldly means. And 3 and 4 is not going to be written for by the Holy Spirit to gain material goods. It's your relationship to God. 
A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. Psalm 33, 16, Hebrews 4, 12, 1 Corinthians 1, 18, and Matthew 7, 24. A wise man is strong. Yeah. A man of knowledge increases strength. Let me ask you something. Wasn't Paul that said that our weapons are, are, are of our warfare are not carnal? What strength did Jesus have? Three scriptural quotings from the Bible and Satan left him for a season. You're not going to pull your physical so, uh, sword or your gun on Lucifer, Satan, and all his angels. And expect to win. You're not going to show your muscles to Satan, the enemy. And he's going to back off and be afraid. You got to sharpen yourself with what? The wise man. The knowledgeable man. And we go back now to 3, 4, 5, and 6, the wisdom of a house, the understanding to establish, the knowledge to fill the chambers. The wise man is strong, and knowledge increases strength. I guess the story is the big bad wolf is going to come pounding at the door. The enemy is going to come knocking on your door. You know, he, he's going to attract your, your wife to television during the day. He's going to attract you to promotions and money and maybe that secretary. He's going to attack your son with sports and, and ooh, and odds of, uh, you know, of uh, getting to a gang or the big friendship uh, thing at, at, at school. The end kid. He's going to he's gonna attract your daughter with posters of uh, handsome men and, and maybe music and, and, ooh, and horses which you can't afford. What are you going to do? You're going to muscle your way through your family? Or are you going to open your Bible and pray your way through the family? I'm telling you, Satan does. Satan is not in your majority of the Christian families today. I don't care if they go to church three times a week. You can go three. You can go to church three times a week if you don't do nothing for the Lord. Satan is not interested. You know, you can go to church and not go to church for the Lord. If mom and dad have to drag you to church, the credit doesn't go to you. If if mom has to get after you all day and all week the next Sunday school for you to, to memorize that memory verse you got, that's not to your credit. And yet the father and the man of the family should be an example to his family. They should know that he prays. They should know that he reads his Bible. They should know that he tries to memorize scripture just like the family should be doing. Every child in a house, we're talking about the house here. With the world and Satan should trip over the threshold of the front door. And you say, well, what are you talking about? In that house should be a praying father and mother that, that prevents or tries to prevent in prayer their children from falling to sin and Satan. And those children who are falling and are going after Satan should trip. Over prayer. And I was going to say on your knees. I'm going to say, you know what? 
you may not be able to go on your knees. I think God understands. You pray sitting down, standing up, none you need. The Bible says, and Paul writes to us, no other, no other foundation can a man lay but that which is Christ, Jesus. And he's talking about the judgment seat of Christ. And all our works. And if Jesus Christ is the foundation, and down here in Florida, the foundation is a slab. They come in here, they dig a hole, they fill it with cement. That's the foundation. Then that foundation should have on it prayer. Prayer for everybody that's in that house and, and for yourself. And an open Bible. And I don't mean just at church. And there are some things that would not and should not be allowed in the doors or through the windows. There are some things that you guys say, you're not allowed in here. Stay out. Get off the property. And it takes a wise man that is strong. And it doesn't take a strong man to be wise. Because you know Jesus, when he tells one of his parables, he says that, you know, a strong man of the house and a thief that comes at night. You know who that strong man of the house is? It's Satan. And who is the thief that comes in? It's Jesus Christ. There are already too many strong men in houses today, Satan. He's inside. And he comes walking right through the door with each member of the family. You ought to be a family that's in word and in prayer. That When you come in your house, you slam the door. I don't know what kind of nose Satan has, but Satan's nose should hit that door as you close it. Now, he may come to the window or down your chimney, whatever story you believe. But don't you invite him in. And Christ and the Holy Spirit and God should be in the house. You know, Satan should look through that window and Christ gives him that little smirk like, How you doing, buddy? And that's not happening in America. That's why you're not going to see a revival. You know the, the two early, or the, the two main, because they list others that were, they, they weren't revivals. The, the two main revivals that came through this country, do you know that alcohol, adultery, smoking were put down and put away? And actually those establishments were closed. Families got right. Five, six-year-old children were getting saved. You want that back? I can tell you how to get it back. But it's not going to happen. You as the father and husband of your family, or even if you're living alone, you need to get down your knees and to pray and clean house. That takes a man. And that takes a wise man to know what exactly to get rid of. And in America in 2014, it's kind of hard because everything around you. Is pagan. You know the days of our weeks are after God's.
It's almost to the point is that you gotta go get yourself into a ship and go find another place and really start your own country again. As the pilgrims done. You have got to rechange your entire life to serve God in a certain rank. If you want to do it right. But that's all by works. As a man, I said you got to pray and you've got to read your, the word daily and clean house. There are places you, you can go and there are places you're not to go. There are things to be in your house and there are things not to be in your house. There are things that need to be poured down the drain. There are things that need to be crumpled up and thrown into garbage. Or thrown into a fireplace. You need to go out in your yard and get yourself one of those, those oil drums. Fit it to, to put wood and having fire in it and there to be some vinyl and plastic and CDs that need to be burned. With some books and magazines. There is to be a lock on certain internet. I've got a lock on my, I look up a lot of images on the computer. I had to put a lock on it because even if I look up an innocent word, I'd get that pornography. You got to put a lock on it. You got to go outside with your television set. There's nothing good about it at all. And teach your, your children to take a nice big swing with a baseball bat. There's nothing good about TV. The history programs, all that, will lie to you. Because if they told you the truth, like a preacher tells you the truth, it would not be accepted and would not be on the television. There are certain family members you're not to see. Christmas cards, they go out the window. Christmas has nothing to do with Christianity of the Bible. You've got to change your words. It's not Easter. It's Passover. Easter, when you find the book of Acts, is a Roman holiday. you got to tell your wife and your daughter you got to test every morning to that outfit you're putting on. You walk in the bathroom and you bend over while you're looking in the mirror. If anything that can be seen that needs not to be seen, that shirt is not appropriate. Put it out in the fire. Every room has to be clean. But you can't do that yet. Father, husband. You got to get clean yourself first. You got to make sure your heart is right with God before you begin. Yet we're all sinners. But how much of a sinner are you? And then you work on your wife and help her. Not beat her, not ground her, not force her. Help. I mean, the Bible says if she has any questions, she's supposed to come to you, not the preacher. So I, mean, I guess you're going to have to do some studying. 
Then you work with your oldest child. Then you work you're going down through the ranks of the ages of your children. You may have to tell grandma and grandpa, your parent. You ready for this? You can give them that gift. You gotta remove Santa. You can't give that you can't give my child that gift. That's inappropriate. You ready for the battle? No, we will not come to your family reunion or your family thing because it's inappropriate. It's not a God approved. No, I can't hang out with you. You proclaim to be a Christian and you're not living a Christian life. What I would be doing is, is, is making it look like you're doing right when you're doing wrong. That's the battle. That's the warfare. That's the armor God is giving you. And with each every step that you take, Satan will be there ready to charge you. You're going to flex your muscles? You'll be doing it by your will. What you can do. And you'll get nowhere. A wise man who studies the scriptures will know how to attack Satan. How, how Jesus attacked Satan. The word. And what you're going to do is be not envious against the evil man, neither desire to be with them. You're going to look at their lives and they just seem so happy that the false advertisement of advertising. Doesn't those people look happy? No, they're not. As they're getting their picture taken for the advertising, they're complaining about their job just as much as you are. That guy who has that big fancy car there and, and the nice gorgeous looking model is probably airbrushed. He's probably up in debt by having that car. And probably his children are all messed up. See, you don't know what their story is and stay out of their life. Just because the, the, the man on the TV wants you to go have the egg sandwich. That you don't need. And his life could be filthy. Especially this day and age. All the people who through advertising has made you, who you look at, oh yeah, I got to listen to what is their private life? For their heart studieth destruction. Is that what you want your house? Th verses 3 through 5? Isn't destruction the work of Apollyon, Satan? And you envy them. That's why you got to get rid of the television set. There's nothing good on it. Well, I watch the news. You can look up news on, on the internet. You can get just the headlines. And their lips talk mischief. Television. Through wisdom is a house builded. Your home and your family.
and by understanding it is established, settled, written down in heaven. And Satan will use family, he will use friend, he will use your job, he'll even use Christians to t try to tear it down. You know when the little piggy made his house out of straw, it burned. So does the straw that's at the judgment seat of Christ. It's called stubble. When the little piggy made his house out of wood, it was destructive. So is the wood at the judgment seat of Christ burned and when he came to the brick house the brick man-made brick is the only stone that is man-made cinder block is not really stone it's all cement and inside that that brick house Three safe little piggies. Mama piggy, daddy piggy, and child piggy. Because they were established by God and kept the wolf out. They didn't burn up to be cooked and eaten. Exactly what Satan wants to do. He wants to fry you and to devour you and to destroy you. And if you can care for yourself with scriptures and Bible, and then your spouse, and then your children, all precious and pleasant riches. You know, if you train up your children and they live right and do right in the Lord, you continue that blessing. And you will reap like you reap from missionaries that you support. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. What is wise counsel? Luke 14, 31. And what would be the war against Satan? Against your family. Against the world. And that war doesn't mean it has to be troops and tanks and missiles and bombs. That war may be, we need you to work Sunday. No. Child may come home, I'm not going to go to church no more and be of age and all that. And I'm not going to serve the God. I'm going, okay. There's the door. Use it. Don't come back till you want to live right. That's a war. That's when you're going to have your armor on. And all of it on properly. All of it, I said. And you better have the wise counsel of the Word of God. You better have a well established preacher, pastor. That's why in Timothy, Paul says not to be a novice. The husband and one wife. I'm going to tell you, how can a pastor or preacher of a church be helping the people if he doesn't even know what it is to be married himself? I believe before any couple get married for the first time, they need to be counseled on what to expect out of marriage. 
I believe they should work with the pastor of the church. A great book is John R. Rice is a Family. There was a book when, when I got married, uh, the pastor, when I worked through it, was La Hell, I think it is. I forget the name. Of, it was about marriage. And we, we went through those, those go read these, these pages this week, and we'll be back, and we'll meet. How can a man do that if he's never been married? How can he explain to a, 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 a promising married couple, hey, it's not going to be happy all your life? If he's never experienced it. A multitude of counselors, there is safety. When you stick together as a family and pray through things and study the Word of God through things, and you got Christian friends that are helping you in prayer, and you're helping them in prayer in their family, you can help establish their house. You can help their family as they can help yours. The Bible says in Acts they went from house to house. You notice how I didn't talk about a revival amongst the church yet. See, you've got to start with yourself. Then your wife. Then your children. You gotta pull that molt that's out of your eye before you pull the speck out of your the friends at the church. You better clean your house before you take the dustpan and all that to their house. Wisdom is too high for a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. 24 and a quarter chapters. And what have we learned about the fool? He can't understand the wisdom of God. It's, it's too glorious. Jesus told Nicodemus, a, a, a teacher of, of the nation, if I told you earthly things you don't understand, how on earth are you going to understand the, the heavenly? We haven't got into the devices of Satan. That the Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. Do Christians know what Satan does? And how he does it? Evidently not, because why would we have chapter 23, verses 29 to 35, written to save people? Why would you go into a bar? Or a package store and preach uh, chapter 23 verses 29 to 35 to a bunch of lost people who have nothing to do with God. Why would that be in there? Why would a preacher preach that out of the pulpit to a lost man? Who is going to walk out of the church and die and go to hell? No, the Bible is written for Christians. For those that are of God. And if it's written for Christians, why do we have a whole episode in here? Use episode because you understand television talk. Why do we have to have a whole section in here about alcohol if Christians were not involved in it? Why do we need chapter 24 verses 1? To six about the family, about the home of a Christian. If if it was if the home wasn't weren't problems, they were all successful. Because they are broken. Now when I say church of God, I mean those that are saved and blood washed. The church of God has broken families, thus we have broken churches.
We are in the Laodicean church age. We're rich and wonderful and great. And God says, no, you're miserable, rotten, poor. And yet the Bible still says, even though saved, for all have sinned and come to shore of the glory of God, we're all sinners. Wisdom is too high for a fool. A fool is one who has his house destroyed. Because look at verse 3. Through wisdom is a house builded. If your house is all out of whack, and you profess to be a Christian, there's reason to doubt your salvation. According to verses 3 to 7, through wisdom, house is built. Wisdom is too high for a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool doesn't want to have anything. The fool does not fear God. He opens not his mouth in the gate. That's where judgment, that's where all the laws were. That's where the, the rulers sat. Those are the people of authority. You could not enter a city until you went to the gate of the city. He's found without speech. No clause, no plead. Standing before the judgment seat of Christ, looking at Jesus Christ in your face, in his face, and your family's destroyed, and your house is destroyed. What are you going to say to God? Absolutely nothing. You have nothing to say. Let's put it to fire. Even worse for you if you're standing at the great white throne judgment. And if you're a fool that says there's no God, what are you going to see as, as God casts off before your eyes, your family? What are you going to do? Tell God to stop? It's not nice? Why would God do that? He that devises to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. Run down to verses uh, 2 and 1. Evil is the consequence of sinning. Evil is the result of doing wrong. When somebody breaks up their family or their house, you're not to welcome them. You're not to pat them on the back. They are equal to a mischief and evil. They're not doing right. You don't pat them on the back. You don't encourage them. You don't give your dog a bone when you find uh, a pile of stuff in the floor when you come home. No, you take that dog and you show that dog he's wrong. You don't pat him a good boy, good boy. No. That's a mischievous, that's an evil thing. That's wicked. You don't do that here. And yet we have an evil and mischievous nation of people today. And what do we give them? We give them free room and board, free clothing, free hospitalization, free dental, free uh, security, a free bed, free running water, free heat and air conditioning, a free drive back and forth to the, uh, you know, from the prison to wherever they, the jail or wherever they need to go. And even this one guy, Charlie Mason, he gets a free license to marry a 23-year-old. I 
I had to pay for my marriage license. How can he pay? He don't make, he don't have a job. And how long has that guy been in the prison system? And how did they reward him for killing and doing everything he's done? They, they, they give him the opportunity to get married. He that devises to do evil, criminal, he wants to murder somebody, Proverbs 1. He wants to steal from somebody, Proverbs 1. He wants to do malicious acts to somebody. He is to be called a mischievous person and what you do, you, you call him a criminal and then you put him in a correctional timeout facility. The thought of the foolishness is sin. Hebrews 4.12, Matthew 5.28. The thought of foolishness. Vanity, folly, that thought. Those worthless thoughts that are foolish is S I N. Did you get that? To him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Do you know you will stand before God if you had any thoughts of foolishness in your life? It better be under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many thoughts of foolishness do you think are going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ? When was the last time you heard out of the pulpit a, 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 a sermon, an outline, just on your thoughts? And the Bible has much to say about it. When was the last time you had a, a sermon in your church about your tongue? And Matthew chapter 12 says you go, you'll you give an account for every idle word. Idle word. Idle word is just as much as the thought of the foolish. Don't worry about the person in the church. Don't worry about your neighbor. Don't worry about uh, you know that person over there. You've got a big molt in your eye. When it says every idle word and the thought of the foolishness, when it when it professes that that is a sin, when you can control your thought life, then then you go to somebody else and you start working on them. After you have taken care of the thought for the, the thought. Of your family, of your house, you got that under 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 victory, and you got the idleness of the mouth under victory in your house. After you've taken a moat out of your eye, see, you've got a revival. It, it's got to start with the individual. And it's got to start with the head of the, of the household. And the head of the household, according to the Bible, is the man. He's the next one under Jesus Christ. He has to go to the optometrist of Jesus Christ, the eye doctor, to get that moat out. And get in the word. And then look to his wife and say, okay, now... And then you don't go over there and start pulling the stuff out of her eyeballs. You let her do it to the Lord by prayer and by the blood. That would be as me saying, you know, me confessing your sin and putting it under the blood. And you say, okay, that, that, you know, I'm, I'm clean of that. No, that don't work like that. you got to teach your family, that, hey, this is a sin. And they've got to get right with the Lord. 
But you've got to tell them. See, what if the persecution of America, and it's going there, somehow, some way. There's a law in the books that uh, hate crime. That in actuality, for a preacher, if he preaches certain topics of the Bible, he can go to j jail under the hate crime speech. What if tomorrow those laws were activated? If the Constitution was shut down, and it may, and you are unable to go to your church, because the Bible believes in churches will be shut down. Those are ones be shut down. Those that are still running will not be, you know, of God in the Bible. What if it has to come down that the only Bible teaching that will remain will be the ones that you teach your own family in your house? Well, what's your family going to learn? You've got churches today where women are the general population. There are no men. Very few of them. And their house is not building. When the walls of Jericho came down, what portion of that wall remained? The one that feared God. If the walls were to come down in, in America, like Jericho, how many houses of Rahab will remain that fear God? If you can look at a satellite picture of the earth, and for 10 minutes, God would show a light right all over the world. The light of a of family who loves and fears the Lord alone. And is trying to do. What kind of light would that be seen if you took the picture of the earth? Compared to, have you seen the, the pictures of the earth at night? With all the lights all over the world? What about the gospel light? I let my light shine is the biggest excuse we hear. What's your house like? What is your life like? How big of a beam do you have? Can God say that you are established in him? Are you a clean vessel? Are you getting pre precious and pleasant riches from God? You know you haven't gotten that at the judgment seat of Christ. Will there be stars in your crown? Is there blood on your record? And I mean blood is when Christ writes down the sins and God sees the sins. Are they under the blood or are they still visible? You ain't have a house that's established. If when the books are open, there's your name and there's those sins. And once in a little spot, there's a blood or maybe no blood at all. You're not going to establish nothing. But when God opens up the book and sees your name and sees blood, and maybe a word, a blood, then a sin, and blood, and another sin, and then blood, maybe a few sins, and blood. If Satan came up to God right now, will God see my servant? And can God put your name there? 
And too many Christians do not want their name mentioned because they saw what happened to Job. And in the end, Job got his family back. He got double. Whereas their lives, they want to the double now and without the persecution and trials and tribulations. There's all kinds of pictures of houses. And I was, like I said, this is your family. And this is not a house house. But Jesus said, He that, that doeth my words like a man that buildeth a house upon a foundation, upon a rock. When the storms came, it re rained. But he that doesn't do my word is that guy who likens his house is built upon a sand. And when the storms came, great destruction. Now, if God were to come up to you, call you up and say, Listen, I'm having a premature rapture judgment seat of Christ. Okay, Lord. And God says, stand right here. I'm going to show you a picture of your house, of you, your house. On a scale from one to ten, one is it is a pile of rubble, smoking, lot, Sodom and Gomorrah. Ten is a is not the mansion that Jesus Christ is going to build for us, but but a mansion that the, the mansion you would like ooh look at that place wow okay if Christ were to show you a picture of what your house looks like right now what would it look like I would I would love to have God show me a picture of an outhouse with a little cut out in the door and be a little outhouse for God, a use, a purpose, and be right with God. Then have that mansion where all the rooms are filled with sin and wickedness. But that's not the picture. If he were to show you a true picture of the state of your house, what you look like to God today, what would that picture be? From a burning rubble to, to an earthly mansion. What would be five? Five would be your, your, uh, a regular house. Is, you know, you got the windows, got a door, it's got a driveway, a, a nice lawn, not manicured, but a nice lawn, and, and, you know, a barbecue pit and stuff like that. And it has a few leaks every once in a while that gets repaired and, and it has to, you know, get this thing fixed and that. Everyone, you know, they're, they're everything. Listen, uh, things break. You need to get them fixed. Where would you stand? Where would your family stand? Stop talking about a national revival of America. Talk about a revival in your life. I'm going to give you one more thing to do and then we're done. We really got not far. But that's okay. I'm in no rush. Here is the most absurd thing I'm going to ask you to do. And I do it myself. So I'm not preaching to the woods. I do this myself. You've got to ask the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ and God, what sins are in your life that are not under the blood that's making God angry with you and that it is maybe even preventing you the fellowship of God? What is distracting God from looking at you right now? And you need to ask yourself that daily. You need to have the inspector come into your house and look all around and see. You may have a termite condition that you don't even know. You may have a sin that you don't even know. Or that leak that's in the living room that, that you've got a bucket there. You, you need to start fixing that. Because that leak may turn into mold. Maybe you need to put a little double D40 on that hinge. It's a little squeaky to God. 
Maybe there, there's just some dirt on the floor that you need to sweep up. Maybe there's caulk that needs to go around the... Uh, some, something. For me, I'm a sinner. All have sinned. There are things if the inspector would come in my house right now, he'd write down in a clipboard. Yes. This is wrong. That's wrong. This needs to be repaired. And I need to get that right with God before I go somewhere else and say, hey, look what you're up. Before I become an inspector. I don't know what the picture God would show me of my house. But it begins with me. And it works outward. It's between you and God. Get that right. Get that revival in your heart. That's what you need.